What's up guys, Dolph here, and I've got another Strike Pack on PC video, hopefully to end all Strike Pack on PC videos. Uh, this one's awesome, it doesn't use the SCP toolkit, it has a working touchpad right off the bat, and there's no input lag as far as I can tell. I want to shout out my boy Smooth Slayer, he's been in my Discord helping a lot of people with the toolkit, and he figured this out and sent it to me a couple nights ago, and here we are making the video. So enjoy, and make sure you use code DOF, y'all. Okay guys, so the first step is you're going to want to open your SCP Toolkit driver installer. So basically you want to remove the SCP Toolkit. So you want to install the, dri the DualShock 4 driver, you want to click on your wireless controller, the one that you like installed the drivers onto, and you want to click uninstall. And it should give you like a ton of notification messages, and at the end if you scroll down in the log it'll say like uninstall complete kind of thing. I'm not going to do it because I've already done it. In your device manager in order to check that you uninstalled the toolkit you're gonna to want to go to your device manager and check for any kind of driver that's like LIB bus like and it should and it'll have your wireless controller under it I don't have anything like that it's like LIB bus I think is what it what it comes up as you can check my past video to see see what that looks like but as long as there's nothing like there on there, you're good to go. Mine's gone. The next step is you're going to want to make sure that your Epic ga your Epic Games launcher is closed. So there's the icon for it right there, and you're just going to want to exit out of that. That's the weird thing with this this thing is that like you're just going to want to make sure that that's always closed. You never want your Epic Games launcher to be open because it creates like a weird lay layer of interference with your controller that you don't want. The next step is to download Steam. Um, if you don't already have Steam downloaded, you definitely want to. It's uh, like a really great game engine, and it has really good controller functions, and that's what's going to allow us to use the controller on PC. Is Steam's going to provide what the toolkit provided, except a lot better. Uh, so the first step to make sure it works is you're going to right-click Steam and go to Properties and Compatibility, and you're going to click Run this program as an administrator. So you're going to make sure you do that. It should add a little shield. To your Steam icon, I'm sure you can see it. Um, so you're going to want to open Steam now that you're running it as an administrator, and you're going to want to open the Big Picture mode. So that's these two arrows right here, or you can like right-click Steam and go Big Picture mode. But these two arrows up here, and now you're in Big Picture mode. Here's where you want to see if the controller is being picked up by Steam because it should be, and your paddle should be pick being picked up also. So try to move around and try to like use your paddles for like X and circle. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm using X and circle on my paddles and I'm moving around with my controller. If it's not working, un try unplug, replug in, go to settings, controller settings, and make sure that the PlayStation configuration support is clicked. You can have multiple of these clicked. I've got like a couple of them clicked for no reason. You're going to want to make sure that the PlayStation configuration support is checked. And then you're going to want to look for the detected controllers down here. And you're going to look for your PlayStation 4 detected controller. From there in your preferences you can name it and you can change the light and the brightness. That's how I made it green. That's how you know that Steam is like picking up your controller. And then it, it, it alerts you that that's what you're using. The next step is to open Fortnite in a way that won't mess up or like create interference with the controller. I'm not 100% sure why this works, but what you want to do is you want to minimize big picture and get back to your regular Steam regular Steam page. So you want to minimize big picture. Go to like the Steam store or library, go to your library. And you're going to want to add a game. So I've done this before in my past videos where we added the Epic Games Launcher through Steam. This time we're going to do something a little weirder. You're going to want to go to Browse and then follow this directory path of Program Files, Epic Games, Fortnite, Fortnite Game, Binaries, Win64. You're going to get to this list where it's got like BattleEye, easy anti-cheat folders, and then it's got a couple of applications. And you're going to want to do the EAC, the, Win, the Fortnite Client Win64 Shipping EAC option. So it's the longest one, easy anti-cheat launcher, I guess. So I guess it's the launcher through their anti-cheat software. 
uh, from my best experience, it works fine. So you're just gonna click that and click open. I've already done it. And you're gonna click add selected program. And what it will look like once you get in your library is you'll have that Fortnite client, Win64, shipping EAC. Um, at this point, before you open your big picture mode again, make sure that your Epic Games launcher is closed. So I don't have it open down here. You wanna make sure it's always closed when you're opening up big picture. Uh, it'll help not create any kind of issues with your controller. So I'm gonna go back into big picture mode and in my library, there is the Fortnite client Win64 uh, EAC option. Um, so you can open this if you just click play right here. You can start, you can just launch Fortnite right there. What you can also do is into the manage shortcut, you go to controller configurations, and this is where you can create controller configurations for your controller. So you, at, to make sure your controller is working as, it, as you would expect it to at first, you're gonna go to browse configurations. Usually there's something for recommended. Go down to templates, and here you will see there's a bunch of gamepad options. This first option is gamepad. So you're gonna to wanna to do that. And it'll give you a preview of it, but basically this is like just mapping all the regular things that you would expect so that Fortnite recognize the recognizes the controller correctly. Um, you would then click apply configuration. So what you can do after that is you can go in and you can start clicking on things and editing your configuration for some specific stuff you want. Like I have WASD on my, um, or, well WASD but the R instead of D because of something dumb that I rebinded. But you can add custom bindings to your controller. Now, something to make, something to keep in mind, my Steam has this weird issue where it, it doesn't use the controller configuration that you have on file for the game. Now I've done a lot of research into this and other people have had this issue and there's no known fix currently. So I'm just gonna have you guys be aware. I have a workaround, but it's just, this will be something you might run into. Is it's, this is the controller configuration for your specific game, but sometimes it, it doesn't read that configuration. So you wanna create a configuration in there and click export configuration and save it as like a personal binding right here. So I, that's why I have all these Fortnite 01, 03.1, because I've just been like leveling through as I, as I change it. Um, and then you wanna go back to your main settings up here. So escape back, back to your main settings. Go to base configurations, the top option, desktop configurations, and then browse your configurations and apply either the gamepad so if you didn't make any changes, just go to templates, gamepad, or whatever t whatever one you made in the game-specific file. The reason you wanna make it in the game-specific file is because in the desktop configuration, uh, it has some limitations and it'll like, it'll mess up your joystick. So if you try to change your joystick in the desktop configuration, it'll like just delete it. So if that happens, that's why I did it. You have to go to your game configurations, create a configuration in the game configuration, and then export it to your desktop configuration. So the issue is sometimes your stream, sometimes your Steam will only read your desktop configurations, not your game configuration. So that I think is like something wrong with Steam, but if that's what's happening, you have to just recognize which controller layout it's reading. Um, so once you've done all that, you can go ahead and launch Fortnite, which I've already done. And when you launch Fortnite, you can use that to figure out which controller configuration it's reading. If nothing's working and you set up something for the game format, then it might be reading your desktop configuration, in which case you need to go copy it over. Okay, so I've launched into Fortnite and the controller's still got the green light. It's still being connected through Steam. My paddles are working, that's what I'm using right now. And I would say that it feels more responsive but it feels really responsive. The touchpad feels really good.
so that's basically it guys if you're having any issues make sure the epic launcher is closed um make sure that you're running steam as an administrator uh and make sure that before you like open everything that that steam is recognizing your controller and that you can find it in there um this also means that you're going to want to go back and remove the touchpad fix if you did that for your strike pack because i know that mine had my share button and my touchpad switched so when i started doing this i was like why isn't my touchpad working it's because it was mapped to the share button through the strike pack so make sure you handle that but i think that this definitely feels a lot better than the toolkit i think the toolkit was kind of age technology so i would rec definitely recommend making the switch I know this is tough timing right before the World Cup starts, but I think it's going to be a lot more reliable and it's going to want to it's going to be what you want to use. So I hope this was helpful. Please make sure you join my Discord if you have any questions or you just want to be kept more up to date with the community and any updates. You can chat, come join my creative games. Please stop by my stream. I stream every day on Twitch. It's usually also on YouTube, but I got banned for 90 days because I share awesome content on my stream and sometimes it's Rick and Morty clips, whatever. Um and don't forget to use code DOF, guys. It would be really appreciated. Check out my social medias, and please stay in touch. And I hope this works for everybody, and we get, like, 100% success rate. Because I know that some people have been struggling with this, and I hope that we can fix it for everybody. So while making this video, guys, I noticed that my gamepad viewer that's, like, on the screen that you guys can see that usually shows the buttons that I'm hitting, uh, it doesn't work when I'm, like, active in Fortnite. So, like, if I click, like, on my OBS right now, then it's working. But then when I like click on Fortnite, it stops working. So I don't know what's going on with that. It doesn't seem to have any effects right now, so I just need to figure out the gamepad viewer, but that is just uh, an issue that I just found while making this. So keep that in mind, guys, if you're streaming and using that gamepad viewer. What's up, guys? Thanks for watching the video. If you want to support me more, go to the item shop, click support a creator, type in code DOF, D-O-F. Let's get it poppin', DOF gang.